well, when you have something like this to come into every day, um, obviously it puts you in a better place to get your work done. Um, we've spared no expense, we've spared no uh, thought to detail. Um, but I think organizationally, um, what it really does is communicate the level of excellence that we um, hope to achieve here and that we um, will hold our players to the highest possible standard and put them in the best place for them to succeed. So as soon as you walk in, before you see it, I think you feel it. And so uh, it's going to affect greatly the way that we work, the way that our players approach work, the way that we uh, communicate and collaborate, and obviously day one of a very exciting new era for us. Have you used the nap or float pod yet? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I have not used the uh, nap rooms yet. Uh, but the float pod is um, probably the one piece of equipment that we get the most questions on. And, I, and, and honestly, Tim, it's actually going to be uh, fully, uh, I think, functional tonight. So <laughs> we're last minute, we're kind of like getting our way in here. Jeff, you, you talk so much about the excitement the team felt when they got the number one over pick excitement opening the building. How, how much do you feel the excitement today is, you know, this really the beginning of training camp and getting into the season? Yeah, here we go. Uh, um, obviously, it was a very exciting night to get the number one pick. Uh, it was exciting to go through the process, and it's super exciting to add a guy like Paolo to our team. I think um, there's a great sense of uh, energy and um, 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 anticipation throughout all of our team, starting with the players and you know, emanating out through all of us. And, uh, you know, we're excited to start the season. For him, uh, for, for him, obviously, there's so many expectations as the number one pick. In your mind or the team's mind, what does a successful rookie season look like for him? Learn, grow, work, understand, most importantly, what winning takes in this league. That, that's a successful season. We, we, have to, um, we have to communicate that not just to Paolo, but to all our players. It's, 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 um, it has to be our first mission, is to uh, get, gain an understanding of the role orientation, the work, the, the off-the-court discipline, everything that takes um, to win in this league. It's a different level. I know you have a lot of timetable questions, but <laughs> is there a chance that Markel is ready to start? Um, so Markel will miss camp and we'll kind of reassess after that, you know, where he is. Uh, you're right, I don't like to put timetables on it, um, but obviously um, um, missing camp will be um, uh, a setback for him and we'll have to, you know, uh, uh, get him going up and running as soon as possible. I won't apply a timetable, uh, but I will say that, you know, we're hopeful that um, he'll be um, um, able to uh, gain full strength and yeah, actually use this time productively. And Jonathan Isaac getting to play basketball again. Oh, I mean, it's just, his story is obviously kind of unparalleled. I mean, yeah. what, he's, what he's gone through multiple, yes. multiple times now. If he is able, I mean, I, I'm assuming he can practice tomorrow. I'm assuming that's the plan. What will it mean just to have him with that? Jonathan will be integrated slowly. Uh, he's still um, doing his individual um, rehabilitation, so he won't participate in, in a lot of the uh, full team live practice uh, components. Um, so he's still, you know, ramping up. He's, uh, I, I hate to uh, sound like a broken record. I know that this has been a long process. Um, and again, I just um, always hearken back to his ability to kind of re remain focused in what's been a really long ordeal for him, you know. So we're hopeful to have him back during the season, and I won't put a timetable on that as usual. Um, want to give him the best possible space to get his work done. No, I mean, he continues to, um, you know, go from level to level in his rehabilitation process. It's a very slow, painstaking process, and obviously, um, you know, uh, uh, I don't want to put a timetable on it because it's just open-ended. We just don't know. And so some of it is he has to put the work in, and when, when that next level is reached, then he'll move up. And that's uh, obviously um, under the attention of our performance staff and our medical staff. And most importantly, it's um, how Jonathan feels as he progresses. Just to be clear, he hasn't participated in any group or, I guess, full team activities. Or not games. live action. Not live action. So I guess for him, he's not expected to participate in that throughout camp at all, throughout training camp? 
Yeah, like I said, Kobe, he's 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 um, in his rehabilitation stage. Um, he won't participate in live action group activities to begin. And um, as he works his way um, through his rehabilitation process, we'll reassess and, and, and see where that takes us as we go. Jeff, with free agency and trades, it's so rare in pro sports to have the continuity from one year to the next year team is enjoying right now. You're able to bring Gary and uh, the whole back. What does it say about those guys, not just as players, but as human beings, that you felt so strongly about keeping those guys within the organization and keeping everyone together? Yeah, it's a great question because if you think about it, um, generally speaking, when you're at the stage that we are of um, kind of learning what it takes to win and, you know, whatever kind of word you want to attach to that, um, those teams generally aren't the ones that have significant continuity on the roster. But we did feel that um, guys have made progress. We feel that they are, are high character guys who can learn how to win and help each other do that. And we also feel that um, they're young enough where a lot of their stories are, are yet to be written and we want to kind of see where they can take it this year. Chuck Mosley's talked all, off, all kind of offseason about this team leveling up and you know, that's, that's a good little, good little buzzword for sure. What does that mean to, to you? What, what does that mean for this team? Um, I think it's a great. I think it's a great phrase, and you, you know, I don't like kind of buzzwords too much. But um, I think that what it means is we need to learn to play better basketball. So fewer mistakes, uh, more discipline, um, uh, tight on the string defensively, and just role orientation. Obviously, the guys have put a lot of work in over the summer, so you know you expect uh, physically and from a skill standpoint improvement every year. Um, but I think those are the things that you talk about, like we need to play better basketball. It sounds simple, but there's a lot that goes into that. And with that comes elevating the standard of accepting fewer mistakes and understanding, again, what it takes to win. You, you meant, I think you, you hinted at this during the, dra during the time around the draft, during the time around the draft and summer. And how has how has Coach Mosley kind of grown in, into this role as he prepares for his, his second training camp in his second season? Well, I, I think it's you know it's it's always fun to note that Coach was a rookie last year too, you know, and I think that's probably a question that you guys will uh, pose to him and better answered by him than me. But I think he grew tremendously as someone who uh, understands how to manage not just games but. Um, agendas, philosophies. Um, we've 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 really worked hard at, at uh, employing a player development program uh, that Anthony Parker is kind of uh, at the center of, and that attaches our whole organization so that each player is uh, getting like a little committee from our team on how um, areas for improvement, how best to do that, and um, you know, coach has attached that to um, his coaching philosophy. So. I feel like organizationally we're, we're getting more and more integrated. You can't do that without a coach who you know, believes in that collaboration and who embraces that and gets excited about it. Um, but uh, as to his own personal growth, I'm sure like, you'll have that question for him when he's, when he's up here soon. Where does Gary stand in terms of participation in camp up here is a knee injury, a knee surgery rather? Yep. Um, Gary, Gary's uh, uh, similar to the others, uh, progressing through his rehab. Um, he won't participate in training camp. Um, you know, we're hopeful that, uh, you know, I think I saw something you guys kind of, um, uh, it's been out there alluded to like what this injury typically kind of looks at from a timeline. I won't get into that except to say that, um, you know, he's moving through his uh, progressions nicely and he's worked hard and he really came in in great shape. And, and what I've been told is that's actually going to allow him to move through this at a good level. From a, speaking broadly, not from a magic standpoint, just broadly, is when you have a seven foot four unicornish player who's already been kind of anointed as the number one pick next year, is Victor already a phenomenon? Already with him, or is it just because he's so unusual? I'm actually not allowed to comment on uh, pre draft players who, who aren't uh, automatically eligible for the draft. I thought you were, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I'm not. But, but obviously, you know, the draft starts, you know, years before that actual calendar year ticks off. And so, you know, we all know the players that we need to start focusing on, uh, you know, long before, you know, we get to the podium on draft night. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll actually have, um, you know, meetings this week with our scouting staff and have flown all of our guys in and we'll be getting uh, down and dirty on all of our kind of, you know, draft rankings and where we need to focus our attention. And uh, that all begins this week. I want to make clear that I absolutely in no way think that you will have any shot 
<laughs> Duly noted. <laughs> from a front office standpoint, how was it? How enjoyable was it to watch Franz play on an international level? Yeah, I mean that's such a good level of competition. There are a lot of NBA players. Um, it's very uh, rare that you know you're able to. Um, get that level of competition over the summer. So for us, it was fun. I mean, you know, Franz is an amazing worker. He's a really smart player. He's a really smart kid. And um, it was just enjoyable to see a lot of the work that he had put in leading up to that, like show up on the court, you know. And um, obviously, like we had some of our staff with him and making sure that um, we were monitoring his progress. And he had a great summer and uh, came back and with great spirits. And I know he's looking forward to the season. Along those lines, there's World Cup next summer, then there's an Olympics, then there's Eurobasket again in 25, so it could be the first of four summers in a row for a lot of guys. Is that good? I mean, there, I mean, I know teams are always going to, teams are always going to worry a little bit, but you want them playing anyway. Being exposed, potentially exposed to that kind of ball four summers in a row, is that a good thing? I mean, you know, I think that that's something that I know the league works really hard with FIBA on to establish good protocols and guidelines so that we can find that balance between reaping all the benefits, which there are many, um, of playing playing high-level basketball for an extended period in a group setting over the summer, um, uh, balancing that with you know putting in the work with your coaching staff and you know getting off your feet a little bit. Um, so you know that's always something that the league spends a lot of time with. And um, you know what we try to do is just whatever protocols they put in place, we we kind of follow those guidelines and make the best of the time that we have with him and try to embrace the experience along with him. Jeff, you mentioned little things uh, going in the training camp. What specifically are those little things that are you talking about with these players? Conditioning, decision making, role orientation. Um, those are the things that um, uh, uh, that equal winning in this league. And and oftentimes when you hear it's hard for young teams to win, it's not because of you know physical strength or any of that it's because of those things and sometimes it takes guys a while to learn that as they're feeling their way in the league and they're not sure who they are going to be yet and what their team is going to be so it, those things take time and and honestly they it takes character and it takes intelligence to um, in, uh, uh, internalize all that so that's the process that the team has to go through when you're at this stage and it's something that we embrace. We think we have a bunch of like high character, smart guys who want to learn that. They want to win. They want to help each other get there. But that's part of where we are now. Jeff, uh, earlier in the offseason, Terrence Ross seemingly talked about maybe wanting to move on from Orlando. Has there been any continued talks about his you know, role with the team moving forward? Yeah, you know, T was kind of caught holding the bag when we, when we made all those trades, you know, a little while ago. and. Um, you know, he's been great about it. Um, obviously, he, he's at a different point in his career than a lot of our players, um, but he's really embraced the situation, and um, he's had a great summer. He's been in a lot. Um, he seems to be in a great, you know, uh, frame of mind right now. He's in great shape, and um, uh, obviously, um, you know, we always are going to be sensitive to, like, the needs of our players and, and where they are and how, how their careers are tracking um, in combination with where we are. But T's in a great place right now. He's excited, he's optimistic, and, and so uh, you know, I expect him to have a good season, and, and um, you know, we'll kind of take it as it goes. Kind of along those lines, kind of along those lines, philosophically, you guys didn't bring, I guess, Robin Lopez stuff, you didn't bring in another veteran, I guess, to replace him. Because how do you look at it in terms of rebuild, in terms of veteran presence, and how much that matters versus giving guys, I guess, a runway, if you want to call it that, to more opportunities, not just playing time, but also leadership? Yeah, that's a great question. It's, it's something that we that occupies a lot of our time with our um, um, roster assemblage, and we spend a lot of time thinking about example setting, um, and also, as you said, um, it's really important, I think, when you're doing what we're trying to do, that every player feels there's a pathway for him. And we try not to Put too many obstacles in the way of that path. Now that doesn't mean every path is going to, every race is going to be run successfully, but it's really important that the players understand that they have a chance here. And so we weigh that, Kobe. It's a great question. We weigh that with um, populating our locker room with players um, who can set examples, who can show these guys how to win. You know, who have been there before, but who also 
um, understand that this is their time to grow and learn. And, um, you know, the roster spots these days are one of the most undervalued commodities in the league. We all wish we could have three more vets on the team, but you only get X amount of slots, and it's important that we keep these uh, pathways clear for our players to grow. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Coach. Guys, thank you so much.